Hey guys, Mayan here bringing you another video. This video is about the breakdown of my first track of 2019. If you haven't subscribed, hit the bell, hit subscribe to get my latest videos in your feed. Boom! Warning, this is not a tutorial. This is a breakdown of my workflow, how I make music, I review the different elements, the different plugins, how they work together to make the track that I came up with as my first track. If you hear some snoring, it's my dog that is actually snoring. My bulldog, uh, Breck, they snore a lot. All right, without any further ado, let's hit the studio. Uh, let me show you what I did for my first track of 2019. All right, so how I start my tracks, usually like building the groove, right? Laying down the, the kick and the bass. Uh, so the kick, it's uh, it's done with uh, Kick Two by Sonic Academy, a really good plugin, and um, the baseline. I usually write baselines with my my sub thirty seven. I record them and then I, I tweak them a little bit. So uh, this is how like the main groove of the track started. Uh, so let's have a listen. So yeah, this is just the low end of the track. As you can hear, you know, like it's a, it's pretty bouncy. Like the bass and the kick, you know, are bouncing well together. Uh, so then, you know, you see elements right here that I call the mid bass. And if we look at the mid bass, is that I basically took out everything under 128 hertz. Uh, so I get just the middle part of of the bass line. So let's go have a listen to it now. Uh, this is usually a tap kick that I use. I cut, you know, like below 100 because I don't want it to be as punchy as my like main kick. So, yeah, let's have a listen to this. This is gonna be bringing it in. So as you can hear, you know, it's like not as as bass heavy. Uh, so like when the actual bass like the bass like low and heavy like bass comes in you can hear it right and that's what's going to drive the track i also do you know automation so like when i need to like take the low end out and add a little bit more tension to the track i do that often then i started messing around with uh what would be cool for my mid hats this is how it sounds like just the the mid part of of the track so yeah nothing too crazy you know just something that drives it you know once you add the low the low end you know i have this hat over here that it's more like a techno ish hat uh, and uh, I have this other one that I'll show you guys and I have it routed through uh, the machine and using the metaverb so it sounds a little bit more techno-ish so let's hear it with the bottom end and, and the bass line and see how that sounds. Yeah, so as you can hear, you know, it's a, it's a track that's moving, it's grooving, you know. I like it when this hat comes in because it just like drives it home, I think. Take out the kick over here. So I think that's important to, to notice, guys, is that uh, in dance music, you kind of like have this structure of like eight bars, sixty bars, but you kind of like want to have something happening every every sixteen at least, uh, just to like it. it it keeps the people wanting a little bit more on like what's next with your track. 
Uh, let's see what else. With the Octatrack, what I did is actually I added some synth lines. Uh, because I had an idea of like uh, I love uh, using brass sounds uh, when it comes uh, down to to my music. I think it sounds great, um, and uh, I'll show you. I use this plugin called Ace by U E H, and um, this uh, plugin actually emulates a little bit of the uh, Moog um, Boyer which sounds really interesting. Uh, but this one has like some really, really good brass sounds that I was looking for and I, and I couldn't make with my synths. So I used this one. Uh, and as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five different uh, elements with the same sound. And they all have different like plugins at the end, or a pageator. Uh, to make the sounds different um, and this is how this part of the track sounds I'm gonna take it out of the other bottom end parts uh, so so yeah so have a listen here So yeah, as you can tell, you know, different elements happening in this track that I think that at the end you'll see the the, the end product. Uh, it sounds really cool. You know, I'm pretty proud of this track. Uh, I love the, um, like, the different layers for the track that I came up with. So here we go. But yeah, I'm going to start it from behind so you can hear the idea. elements you know this one so I have like three different sets of, of synthesizer sounds and as you can see this one has a lot so usually what I do so for instance like this one as you can see I record different sounds and then I chop them up and then I end up using just like little bits and pieces that I feel that would, would give character to the track so we're gonna go with the first set of elements <laughs> So let's listen to this one by itself, just so you guys can hear what it was all about. It, it, it felt to me that it was a little bit like, like Western, uh, like the guitar and, and like the... So yeah, it was kind of fun recording this. Actually, this is from uh, uh, my analog. Four. And uh, one thing that I added to it so it sounds a little bit more interesting is this uh, uh, Move Multi Mode Filter. Listen to how it sounds without it. So it's a little bit dry, right? Now let's add this one. I, it just adds a little bit more movement and I don't know, character to, to the sounds. Uh, so as you can see, there's a progression here. So I did different takes while I was like uh, messing around with my synth. And then I chose the ones that I thought that it would work the best. So I went from take 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, and then it, it switches back to 1. So it, it, it just, uh, in my head, it made a little bit more sense. Uh, this one actually came out of the same, uh, I believe, from, from the same recording. And it's like, 
there's like a guitar pluck. Um, so it was like, bum, bum. So now let's see how that sounds with with the wrist. See that. Since so we had the third synth battery. So yeah. Let's move. Uh, let's see. We have my third battery of synths that I use with the little like plugs and whatnot. So let's see what sounds I have here. So yeah, this is this is something that goes really well with the brass sounds. So let's listen to that. Those two to working together. So I have different elements here that I was making. Uh, I think that I made them like so this one is for sure. This two right here, I made them with my analog four and to like start naming them to keep order of things. I believe that this one I made with let me see. Yeah, this one was more of a synth sound that I made with the octi track. And then let's hear this one. This one's actually a percussion. Um that it was also with the Octatrack and this one's part of like the same guitar sound that I made with the Analog 4 um, that one just goes throughout the other track and I separated this one from this this bunch because I needed to accentuate this sound uh, when it was like when like the entire main body of the track was coming back in so let's get the other battery of synths going Okay, now let's add the drums, the low end, and the kick. Then, you know, since I am Guatemalan, I love Latin percussions, so I decided to go write some with the Octatrack. So these are the percussions that I actually built for this track. I took this uh, sample from Raw, and then I just picked out a sound that I thought it was cool out of like the entire loop and then I made my own and then I packed it all into a folder so I could only use that um, 
that part of the of the loop. So let's go and listen to it with the rest of the sounds that we've been talking about. And this is how it sounds, right? I think that the percussions add a little bit more of movement to to the the main part of the track. When when you're building a track, you also want to have uh, uh, some atmospheric elements to the track because it makes it uh, easier when you're starting the track, building the track, and like uh, when you're having breaks and whatnot to to have something that is not just so static that you keep on adding layers and elements to the track. So I have two main elements. Uh, with atmospheric sounds, I call this one Atmos Sense. This is just like a pad that I recorded from my um, uh, my Electron Analog 4, I believe, or, or maybe it was the Korg Mini Log, I'm not sure. And then this is the final break and build up of the track before you actually take it out to the final part of the track, this is what I did. So as you can see, it's a really similar. So I call this one soundscapes, um, and uh, I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to like get that like uh, like sweet reverb soundscape happening through the track uh, for your buildups, right? So look at my chain over here. I have uh, a an EQ cutting everything down from the 200s. Uh, then I have the Valhalla, a vintage Burv. Then an auto filter, because this is going to help us if we want to like cut something along the way. Let's say at the end, before you like bring in the kick, you just cut everything down and uh, it's easier. It makes it a little bit drier. Then I also have the, the shifter, the pitch shifter of that one, it's it's kind of fun uh, to play around with. Then I, then I have another Bahala. <laughs> then I have the LFO tool, cutting down where a kick would eventually hit in this track. Um, and uh, then the directional mixer, just to like tighten the the spread a little bit, because if not, you start getting into phasing and all this other stuff, and and then. Uh, what phasing does is that it takes sound quality away from different uh, frequencies from other elements in your track. So it's something that you would want to keep your eye out for. So this is how this sounded like. And now let's bring all the other elements in. I recorded the, them with uh, those like little egg shakers. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was kind of fun making your own shakers with little egg shaker things. build 
build up and then I have an idea of effects fillers for like different part of the track. So let's have a look at those. So let's turn them on. So you can have like different layers of, of different effects happening and uh, makes track sound interesting. So for this, I use the tape delay. For the second one, I added the Valhalla uh, frequency echo, which just mangles the crap out of your sound. It's kind of cool what it does. And then I added the dub station. So yeah, it, it, it sounds so interesting. So let's see how this sounds without any of the processing that I have here. Just this one, which is fill two. It's like a really fast like uh, percussion sound. Now let's add the EQ. A little bit uh, less bright because I'm taking out the the high part of the of the element. That gives it, you know, a little bit more of uh, uh, an interesting sound to it. And then let's add the dub station. Now listen to that tail. It even sounds like it's like a reggae like uh, vibe and like uh, delay. So yeah. And then both together. Is how they sound. Then right over here, I have another one. So with this one, I started with the Dove Station, and then you know EQ'd it a little bit. I uh, really did not use any compression on these ones because I, I don't know, it, they sounded good as they were. So and since they're just like a little bit effects elements, you don't really have to do any compression don't want to okay so this is how it all sounds <laughs> So I have like, different vocal layers for for this track um, with different treatments to it. So we're going to go and listen to this element right here. So this is a vocal sound, tribal vocal sound that I chose for this track and this one has some treatment too uh, this one I usually use when I'm using a vocal that I'm not really too sure on the route that they're using uh, so I just use it to, to kind of like bring it to the root of the track that I'm writing uh, this one's uh, something that I use in all my tracks uh, and then noise gate and then the Valhalla, and then you can build your own effects. This one I add a little bit of echo, and depending on the type of effect that I want, I switch to EQing. So for this one, you know, I took out the, the high end, but then for the delayed one, we actually added the high end of this vocal. So you have that little tail happening there. Uh, and then this is, let's see, which other one I have. Yeah, so I had like different delays, layers to it. Um, so, so yeah, this is the one of the main ones, the, the one that started it all. So let's have a listen to this one. 
So that's like the main vocal that I used. And then I'm this one's another one that just added a little bit more contrast to the to the main vocal, right? So let's have a listen to this one together with the other ones. So if if you have headphones on or if you're listening to like with the speakers, you can hear one of them coming from behind and going to the right side and front. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's kind of tricky to pay attention to, but it sounds really cool with headphones, and that's why I did it. So basically, those are all the elements for the track that I made this week. Um, as you can see, you know, it says over here 58 tracks. Uh, the reason for that, and I have a bunch of them hidden, is that I use a lot of like MIDI, um, MIDI tracks, and then I just hide them, mute them, because I if if I want to go back to them, I can do that. Uh, I also have this like side chain like um, track, and then this is how I color code everything in my tracks. And um, so green is for vocals, purple is for effects, any synth um, elements. We go like light blue and then darker blue. Percussions are always orange for me. Mid drums are always yellow. And my low end is always red because it's always the hottest part of the track. Uh, so I'm going to play a little bit of the track. Uh, I'm not going to go all the way through it because um, if I want to release this track, yeah, you guys know this. So, yeah. So I'm just going to play parts so you guys can see and yeah this is uh, my workflow, my breakdown of the track Lucas and my review of my first track of 2019. If you haven't subscribed please do so and uh, I will see you on the next video.
Thank you.